I just made this new t-shirt using some heat transfer vinyl and my Cricut. I just made this t-shirt and all of these t-shirts using my Cricut and some screen printing. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. Do you like to do it, build it, or make it? We do too. We have a new video each week. This week, we're doing some t-shirts with the Cricut. Back. Back to the t-shirts. Yes. Kind of continuing our beginner series. So Garrett's mom has now requested t-shirts. Kind of. I basically shared that that was the number one reason why I wanted a Cricut was to create my own t-shirts. Yeah. So we figured to continue our series and kind of we're keeping her in mind as we do this for a beginner. Uh, we're going to show you how to create a new t-shirt with HTV. And that's that's for like one shirt or a few shirts but if you want to say fund your local bmx racer so that he can race on the hill track and he needs enough money for a sponsorship then you might want to make multiples and so i'm going to try it with a screen print i'm going to use the cricket to make a screen to do some screen printing well just like crew jones yes <laughs> I hope you all got his movie reference. It's his all-time favorite movie. But what if you weren't doing that and you weren't trying to fund your BMX race, but maybe you wanted to bring a few t-shirts to the farmer's market, the craft fair, or make a few for your business, your small business, then you may want to use the screen printing technique to create multiple shirts at one time. Yeah, it would be a whole lot cheaper and easier than doing like six, 12, 20 t-shirts using heat transfer vinyl. Right. That might be a little tedious and take forever. Well, and it'll be expensive with that HTV. Oh yeah, and then it'll get expensive. Yeah. We should do a breakdown of a when you break even. No numbers. Yeah, I was gonna say. Are you sure? <laughs> hey dudes, let's walk this sucker. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. Uh, this week, it's gonna be a scavenger hunt. We're in the middle of a craft room slash studio makeover and stuff is everywhere and nowhere because I don't know where anything is right now. It is, this is kind of a haphazard way to film, but as we brainstormed the items that we needed, we knew we had them all. We think we have them all. We just had to find them. So off we went. First we needed heat transfer vinyl. So I went over here to my organization wall where the heat transfer vinyl is, and this row here is all HTV, but then I noticed that it was all glitter HTV, which happens to be my favorite, clearly. Uh, and then the last second I happened to find one small roll that I didn't even know what it was, but as I unrolled it, I can see that it's HTV. So, and it's black and white, perfect oh, for what we're doing. Perfect. <laughs> Next thing we needed was some permanent vinyl. We had plenty of that stuff. Here we go, 651, Orcal 651. Then we needed some blue painter's tape. That's close by. Some fabric ink. A squeegee. A screen. And an easy press. Or an iron. Or heat press. Or whatever you have that heats things up and presses them. Oh, and we needed t shirts, but we had a big bucket of t shirts to dig through. Kim likes to collect t shirts. I Who doesn't? I told you my favorite thing to do with a cricket is make a t-shirt. <laughs> and of course, uh, uh, the cricket. Step two, we're going to make our cuts. Well, we're just cutting out our heat transfer vinyl right now. We're going to jump into design space, show you how we do our PNGs to get them to cut on the... Well, Kim's going to show you how our, we do our PNGs. <laughs> I'm not that well versed in cricket. He's okay. I could get by. I'm better. Kim's way better. So. <laughs> so here we are in Cricut Design Space. So I'm going to create a new project here. So for this project, we're going to import a PNG file. 
Um, this is an image, an image file different than an SVG. An SVG is a vector file that already has the layers for cutting, but sometimes you don't have the option of bringing in an SVG. You might find an image like a PNG. So I'm going to show you how to import that, clean it up, and prepare it for cutting. So here I'm going to say, I'll just go ahead and say complex, and then when I hit continue, you can see that this image already had a white background. We want to remove that because we don't want to cut the white background. Uh, so we're in the select and erase tool is already selected here and we'll just click in all the areas that we want to remove. So if I click here in the white, it removes the white background. And then I need to click, click here and remove the white here and here. And do and B. Everywhere I click, it's removing the background for us. And here's the center of the A. All right, I think we're all cleaned up here. This looks good. Those are all the items I want to cut. So I'm going to say continue. And we're going to uh, save this as a print and cut in case we want to print and cut later, but that's not what we want to do in this instance. So I'm going to show you how we manage that. So now I've uploaded it and I'm going to now insert the image. Here it is. Looks great. And if you want to know what size to make your image for your t-shirt, um, you can find lots of logo sizing guides out on the web on Pinterest. There's a bunch, they're free. So um, there's lots of neat files and little reference guides that you can use for different types of t-shirts and tank tops and things like that. But for this particular project, I already know that for a size large and extra large, which are mine and Garrett size t-shirts, that you wanna make your image between 10 and a half and 11 and a half inches wide. So I'm going to just go up here and change our image size to 10.5 and 3.85 will certainly fit on a shirt so we're good to go here but if you notice over here it says print and cut cut and print here um, that's not what we want to do what we want to do is actually just cut our image so I'm going to say no fill you see this just comes in so it's now prepared for just cutting now when I click make it, it looks great. I think that's exactly what we want. And this will cut on our vinyl this way. Uh, everything is going to be in, we're just gonna make this a black and white. So I think I'm gonna cut everything in the black uh, HTV vinyl. So I think I'm good to go here. Now for a t-shirt, you want to mirror on HTV because it's going to cut the side of the vinyl that will be applied to your t-shirt. So you need to cut it backwards so that when you flip it over and iron it on, it's ironed on in the correct order or orientation. So I think we're good to go. I can hit continue and we'll cut our vinyl. Now it's just connecting to my maker and then the next thing will be to select the type of vinyl and we're gonna select HTV. Oh, see, glitter vinyl, it's clearly one of my favorites. And I can search for it right here. We're gonna use a non cricket brand. It automatically lets you know, hey, don't forget, make sure mirror is turned on and Iron on material is face down, which is shiny side down here. And you can see we do have mirror on. Uh, default pressure, fine point blade, which is what comes in your cricket. And we can go ahead and load our mat. Okay, since our design was only four inches of this 12 by 12 sheet of HTV here, I'm gonna go ahead and trim it down so that uh, we don't waste 
Waste not, want not. Yeah. All right. And our big tip here is to weed while it's still on the mat. So this will help hold it for you. And remember, when you weed HTV, you want to leave on the clear backing what you want to be ironed on. So I'm going to pull off everything that I don't want ironed on. I'm just going to leave the mirrored image. Yes. That was tedious. I would not want to do that for like a dozen shirts. Shoo. So we got so far, almost done. Let's set this aside. We're not done with any All right, next step is to iron on our design. So I have our t-shirt, we have our easy press mat here. And I'll give you a couple tips I've learned with creating t-shirts and ironing on a design. Um, the number one thing is to be able to line it up and figure out w where to put it on this t-shirt. You don't want to look all cattywampus with your logo all crooked. Uh, no, you don't. Or too so, well, like it's on your belly. You don't want that either. So the first thing we're going to do is figure out where the center of our t-shirt is. So I'm folding my t-shirt and I'm gonna line up the edges here and figure out where the center is. Clean this up here. That looks like I have it right. Yep, it's pretty symmetrical. All right. So now that I have it folded, we're going to press a center line in the, in the center of this t-shirt. That way we know where the center is. So I'm just going to do it right up here. We can just, I don't know, I'm going to count. I don't, I don't even have the time. I'm just going to count, you know, 10 yeah. seconds or something. Seven Mississippi before you go in. So now I have an ironed line right down the center. I don't know if you guys can see it but it lets me know where the center of my shirt is. And the next thing we want to do, I'm kind of centering it on my mat here, is we want to find the center of our image. So we're going to fold our design over and I'm going to create crease the corners uh, once I line it up correctly. There we go. You don't want to fold it over on top of itself like I just did. Oh no, we lost the line. Yikes. Let me fix that. You don't want it to touch. I didn't mean for it to touch. back in business. It's not perfect, but just don't stop moving and nobody will notice that that line is a little squiggly. <laughs> anyway, what I tried to show is I now have a little bend in my design. Because this one's so fine down at the bottom, that's what made this tricky. Normally it's not quite that tricky. The other tip to give you, so now I know exactly where the center of my design is, where the center of my shirt is, and then for a typical t-shirt design, you'll want to put it three fingers, finger widths down, three to four. My four is Garrett's three. Yeah. So give me three fingers up there. Pinky's out. And then does that look right? I think we've got it. So I've lined up my lines, my little markers. I'm three fingers width down. 
Our easy press machine is on, my temperature is 320 for 15 seconds. All right, so I'm just gonna put this on here, press our little green cricket button. It's gonna start counting down our 15 seconds. All right. Ugh. It's a cold peel. And this is a cold peel, so we wanna let this cool off for a minute before we peel off the clear backing. Cool it down. You've got to things. slow it down. Ooh, watch out. All right. Before you you want to peel, peel it? Yeah, let's peel it up. Why? Wow, so if it goes wrong, it's me. Yeah, I can blame you. Ooh, look at that. I'm worried about those Looking little so letters. Fancy. Oh, oh. oh, don't tug too much. Okay. You want to do it then? Yeah, let me do it. All right. Whoa, Tuggy. You're gonna be tugging on him. All right. Damn, look at that. Looks great, even with the skinny lines. All the skinny lines will just never stop moving it, and you'll never know that one no, of them it looks is good. a little squiggly. Isn't that great? So, that's how you make your own t-shirt. Ooh, that looks sharp. Now, what if you wanted to make 10 of these. Yeah, what if you had to start a BMX company? Mm, I don't want to hear any more about it. T-shirt number two, or number two's multiples. And we're jumping right to step two. Back at it again with all of our cuts. This is the last of our cuts. We're gonna use some permanent vinyl this time, and we're gonna keep the same design. We're gonna keep it mirrored. We're just cutting it out a little bit differently. I'll show you in design space. Back in design space, the same image. We're just gonna hit make it again. And this time we're gonna do some absolute positioning. We're gonna want as much vinyl as we can to surround the image. And we wanna keep it mirrored. So I dragged it to exactly where I want it. So I have some gaps on the sides and the tops. So when I put it inside the uh, silk screen, I don't need the tape getting all up near my design. Less tape, less leak. Kim, am I just using vinyl? Yep, just using regular vinyl. Just using regular vinyl. And I'm leaving the tip the same? Yep, I guess so. Yep. So this one's going to be weeded opposite of what we did for the other. We wanted to leave the vinyl to transfer it onto the t-shirt. But for this one, we're gonna remove the vinyl so the ink will pass through. Apply our transfer tape. This way the design stays where it's supposed to be. Transfer it from the backer to the silk screen. Silk screen. Which way you think we should do it this way? Yep. Alright, shoo! <laughs> well, I only have to do this one time. Alright, just gonna throw it on here, center. And line up the top. Towards the top. Flat. 
All right, I think we're in. Now we're just gonna tape it off with painter's tape anywhere we don't want the ink to come through. So really just the sides. That's why I tried to place that in the center of the vinyl. Make sure the tape overlaps so it doesn't leak through the tape. All right, that's what we got. That's what we got so far. Almost done. I like it? Yeah. We're gonna stick this board up inside the shirt. Keep that shirt taut and stiff. You can use like chipboard or cardboard or what yeah. we just happen to have is laying around. A little piece of cardboard. Everybody's got an Amazon box laying around. Uh, yeah. Amazon boxes <laughs> everywhere. At least we did. Now you can crease it like Kim did before. We'll just go in. Well, here's eyeball. the tag. You can eyeball it with the tag, I guess. I'm gonna eyeball it. It was like... So is that about... Yeah, I think you're right at there. your three fingers, so just yeah. put it... I think that's great. Looks great right there. That's where I'm putting it. All right, it looks good. We got our Speedball Fabric Ink. I'm gonna take this little spatula and spread it out at the top of uh, right at the top of this design. Put a little glop here. Get that end. Put a little glop here. And you don't have to worry about wasting paint because you, what the paint you don't use, you'll scrape back up and put right back in the container. All right, we're ready for the moment of truth, for the squeegee of truth. Now we're just gonna give a nice, firm pull, pull towards me on like a little, like 60 degree angle, little 60 degree angle, just pulling on through. Give you guys a close up. All right, you ready? I'm ready. Right? Or no, you don't think so? Okay. Yeah, right. Lift it? Yep. Quick. Swoop. Bam! Oh, I could have done better over there. That's where I hit your hand. Let's do it. It is one. where you hit my hand. Yeah, set that aside for a minute. I'll get another one. Looks pretty good. The exclamation is just a little bit light, but the but it didn't bleed. I mean it's other than that, it's good. No, um, the line moved a little. Yeah, that's where I hit her hand. We'll try again. You think like right there? Can't see on that side, so I'll see if it's centered. All right, we're in. All right, I'm gonna push the ink back up the other way. Yeah. All right, ready? Ready. getting a little scared of that corner. Exclamation just doesn't want to get as well, crisp. I'm getting uh, I'm pussyfooting around that. Oh, area. because of my hand was yeah, there. Yeah, your hand's still there, yeah. Yeah, let's try another one without your hand. Okay. All right. Little angle. Nope, don't hold it. I got it. Well, no, it is definitely going to slide. I'll just get out of your way. All right, ready? Ready. Oh, oh that 
Good job. All right. You just have to get in there. Get in there. There you go. All right, look at that. A lot better looking, huh? All right. Now we have to let these dry. And it says like 24 hours, but we're gonna see if we can heat gun it. And then set it with a heat press. What, you don't want a heat gun? You don't trust it? Are we gonna have to wait the whole 24 hours? Uh-huh. You wanna let this dry for 24 hours and then set it with the heat press, which we'll come back and do that. All right, well, in the meantime, I'm gonna go clean out my screen. Screen looks brand new, it washed right out. And the vinyl came right off. The vinyl started coming off with a little bit of hot water and some soap. Step four, and now we're gonna set the ink. It's been 24 hours. We're gonna do 320 for 40 seconds. We're gonna put a piece of paper on there just to protect it. Are we gonna put the mat down? Yeah, because it's gonna put, a mat put down. the heat down. There we go. Put the mat down so we can put the heat down. All right, ready? Ready. We're just trying to bake in this paint so that it doesn't come out when you wash it. Oh yeah. If you don't do this, it'll start to fade in one to two washes and it'll look really faded by three or four washes and unrecognizable by the 30 second wash. But if you really want that aged, worn look. Yeah, don't set it. <laughs> Are you gonna make some shirts? You're gonna use the heat transfer vinyl? You're gonna try to do your own screen printing? It came out pretty good. Yeah, so these that are two. Crisp though. Yeah, he likes the way the vinyl looks. Yeah. But if you were gonna make a bunch of them, this is the way to go. Easy, don't look bad. Remember to get your exclamation point. <laughs> so these are just two ways to make a t-shirt with a Cricut. There are some more advanced techniques. What do you think about the logo? We're thinking about changing up the logo. Let us know what you think about that too. Yes, so there is a colored version of this logo that you haven't seen yet because we're not sure we want to stick uh, stuck with it, stick with this one yet. We're not sure if we're confident. Sold on yeah, that's logos. what I was trying to say. <laughs> we will soon, when we unveil the craft room, we will unveil the new logo when new we decide. Year, new craft room, yeah. <laughs> new logo, new season. About that time, I gotta go get some dinner. So we'll see you guys again next week or we'll do a building to make it. I don't like, like always. And I am I'm not going to be able to balance. Do you want to balance the heat press? I think it's still hot. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to save that for when I put it on your finger. I don't know. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I wouldn't have done that to you. <laughs>